Hey, Don Victor here. I want to have a quick conversation with you about the coronavirus and artists. So this message is for artists and just to encourage you, give you some options for dealing with the coronavirus issue. So I really don't know too much about the coronavirus. What I do know, um, just the facts that I know around it. I'm just personally leaning into faith rather than the fear based on the facts that I know. I look around and I see a lot of people getting terrified, panicking, scared. And you have to be very cautious with that because you have to understand that worry is a form of meditation. You know, people say, well, these people don't have faith or I don't know how to meditate. It's like, no, you do. You have tons of faith. You put it in. You're certain about something you can't see or you don't know. And you meditate on that certainty in the form of worry. And so you're, you're, you're worried that something bad's going to happen to you. You're going to get sick. You're going to die. Uh, someone that you love is going to die or get sick or be hurt or harmed. You're going to lose your employment. You're going to, whatever it might be. Okay. And so what I'm encouraging artists to do is to stop, to become people of service. Use your creativity to comfort people. Be bold and rebuke the nonsense. Stay sober-minded. Be wise-hearted. Be disciplined. Clean your house. Wash your hands. Be courteous. And don't allow other people to make you feel like crap because of their silly thinking. So what's going to happen ultimately over the next couple of weeks is people are going to get very scared. And so you're going to see art clubs shutting down. You're going to see ateliers closing down. You're going to see art schools shutting their front door. These brick and mortar studios that gather people together to critique and to encourage each other, to equip each other, to learn, are going to shut their doors. Now, lucky for you, there is an atelier that I know of that isn't brick and mortar. We're online. And we created ourselves five years ago to be an online atelier that focuses on composition and storytelling. And so we can deal with people who have incredible drawing and painting skills or people who don't. We can deal with people who have 20 years of education and people who've never went to college for art. The truth is, is what I found is most artists, no matter if they're novice, beginners, or professionals in advance, very, very few of them have any authority in telling stories investigating and exploring their imaginations and learn and knowing how to design and compose those ideas for effective visual communication. You have to understand as artists, and you know this, as artists we're full of vision, full of vision. But if you don't know how to capture it, if you don't know how to contain it and compose it, then you'll never know how to actually communicate it in a way that 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 is effective. And so my job is to cultivate a community, an environment that transmits these long-lasting truths and rules and ideas rooted in classic art design so that you can be better and have a greater authority in the exploration of your inspiration and the examining of your ideas and how you uh, craft your work and smith it and so that you can have truer and more authentic expressions so that people can resonate with them they can experience them as well you know for example one of the things I do with the artists that I train is before they paint before they draw they have to write down on a piece of paper what is the purpose of this painting? 
What is it that you want the end user, the person who stands in front of your painting to experience? And they write it down. And well over 80% of the people who look at the final work end up saying something that's almost word for word what the artist wrote down. So that tells me, out of doing this for so many years, we know what we're doing. We know how to see an idea, capture it, compose it, express it in a way that the viewer actually gets. And so the results of that is people sell more artwork, they win more awards, they feel more satisfied because they're tapping into more of this classic nature, not just classical painting. Painting like someone painted in a specific time period. But classic art design is timeless. You'll be able to understand Japanese art, Chinese art, African art, contemporary art at some level. The Renaissance, the Broadway, all these different movements, all tapping into the same spirit, this classic ability to tell a story, design it, express it, communicate. At the Academy, the way we run it is we have small online groups. We meet face to face, literally through the video camera. So we're not in little groups where you spend 18 hours typing back and forth to each other. That's ridiculous. Nobody got time for that. We got to see your face. We got to see your micro expressions. We got to hear your tonality. Because that's how we communicate. 97, 93 or 97, I think it's 93% of communication is done through tonality and body language. Not through the words that you use. The words you use, people will only believe 50% of it. But the energy in which you speak, the energy in which you, you do, people believe 100%. Energy doesn't lie. Words do. So, I'd love to see you at the Academy. We have to be very careful as artists because it's our nature to isolate most of us. We like to isolate. We'll isolate into our artwork. We'll isolate into our studios. We'll pull away, and that's easy for us to do. But during a time like this, you can't isolate. You have to collaborate. You have to network. You have to socialize. And because we have the Internet, we can continue those disciplines. And I say disciplines because it's too easy for an artist, like I said, to isolate, to hide. We've been put on this earth with a gift. I want to help you make sure that that gift blossoms and is fruitful and is ever replenishing. I want you to understand that your creativity is a well that can never go dry. Because you are the source of the creativity. Your life, every relationship that you have with other people, with other things, with God, with yourself, all of it are streams of creativity that flow into you in a unique pattern that is not the same for anyone or will be the same for anyone or has ever been the same for anyone. It is unique to you. Your story is more unique than your blue than your fingerprint. And I want to make sure that you know how to tap into it, that you know how to ex uh, examine it, and you know how to express it. So that when you go to a museum, you no longer feel like you're looking at a work of art and you're intensely looking at this thing, trying to understand why it's so beautiful, why is it so classic, why is it so great? And you feel like it's not even looking back at you. It doesn't even recognize you. Because it doesn't. It appreciates your drawing and your painting skills. But it's neither a drawing nor a painting. It is a composition. It is a composition. Performed in paint and pencil. You've got to understand that. It is not a painting or a drawing. It is a composition performed in paint and pencil. An inspired composition. And until your 
producing artwork in that frequency, you will never resonate with the work that hangs in the museum. Never. It's time to get serious. It's time to get disciplined. The Academy of Composition, we will discipline you into greatness. You are great. You just need someone to show you that you are. How to go inside, pull out that story, those ideas. Show you the grammar and the lexicon so that you can actually begin to form that thing. And then give it. So this is how, you, if you're interested, if this resonates with you, if you don't want to be locked away in your home, but you want to connect with other great thinking artists, serious, disciplined artists, seeking to thrive and bust and destroy the myth of the starving artist, because my concern isn't, are you going to eat? <clears throat> my concern is, does your soul, is your soul fed? Are you a starving artist? Or or is the artist in you starving? I'm more concerned about that. How do you feed the artist inside? In a way that's satisfying. Meat. It is, it is meat. It's eating adult food. Not baby food. Not milk. You got me? You need to be in a community that dines together on excellence, that has expectations, high standards of each other and of the work we produce. You grab your tea, grab your coffee, grab your wine and show up. Join the conversation. To get started, all you got to do is go to Academy of Composition, click on Free Gift. That is a video course I put together a little while ago. Go through it. Do the work. Pay for the feedback. Be serious about it. Do the work. And if you do the work, then we will consider your application for membership and mentorship. But go do the work. It's free. I made the course free because it's super important that we get artists to understand who they are. And then if you're willing to be dedicated to the work, to the process, to the discipline, then I'd love to invite you into this home. We have the structure. We have the atmosphere. We want brothers and sisters in this, in the faith of art. We're not just a school with students. We're much more like a temple of a priesthood, a priesthood of painters who understand our responsibility is to download heaven into earth, is to download the ideas and the songs of the muses and the poetry of the muses through our visual art so that it enriches the lives of other people. That's our job. If, you, if that's not the connection you want, then this isn't the right place for you. But if you want to feed the world, who's hungry for beauty and meaning with art that actually matters and that touches soul, then maybe this is the place. Go to academyofcomposition.com, click free gift, do the work. I'll see you on the inside.